All right, thank you, Cade, for being on here, giving the uh, giving the rankings out of ten for those those two uniforms of those two respective squads. Now let's move over to Division Three here, the one level we didn't talk about with those uniforms. We've got a little bit of a scheduling agreement in Division Three, and uh, this one comes between the Liberty League and the Empire Eight. Not apparently, I guess, too surprising, but something that we're seeing a lot more of these conferences at, at all these small school levels, but Division Three in particular partnering up and securing some of those outer conference games for all their member institutions for following years. And this just makes a lot of sense, not just this one in general, but the idea of it, because you're taking the load off of your coaching staffs and your administration and all those other people that are involved with these decisions at small schools, this out of schedule con or, uh, out of conference, excuse me, scheduling has become such another ordeal and a piece that's been thrown onto the plate of the administration and the uh, coaching staffs respectively at all these smaller schools. It's something that division one squads have dealt with for decades, for borderline centuries, right? Trying to schedule out a conference, especially now in today's day and age, you've got division one schools announcing future matchups, maybe four or five years in advance because they're already inking those deals. And it has all that has to do with media rights and contracts and those kind of things. But for small schools that maybe don't have that level of those staffers and that kind of, uh, you know, those resources, scheduling those when money and travel is a much bigger part of the equation and a bigger factor in the decision-making process, it can be really tedious and difficult for a lot of these smaller schools at the D3 level. So you got the Empire 8, the Liberty League. They've announced a crossover footballing schedule agreement uh, for uh, the 2025 and 2026 seasons with potential of renewal in future seasons. So it seems like kind of a trial run. Hey, let's make sure this shit works. And then if it does, which we assume it will, We'll continue to pick this thing up. So, uh, it, kind of the the article here has a lot of like yap and a lot of uh, buzzwords, but you know when you when you look at this thing, some of the big takeaways: Empire Eight, obviously Cortland, a lot of the State University of New York schools um, that are in there. Brockport's another one. Morrisville, we've had uh, some representatives from here on there. Um, then you look over to you know the Liberty League. And the one that jumps out is obviously Ithaca College, right? So you've got that game that's being played uh, every year just about it with that Cortica Jug game. So that's something that I'm sure was a big part of this, which just makes sense because those two not being in the same conference, but being and having that historic rivalry with the Cortica Jug game happening, uh, taking place every year, that's an easy kind of crossover there. But some other squads over in the Liberty League that are, uh, I think, worth noting. Uh, Hobart College. One that I think we've heard a decent amount about, uh, potentially uh, RPI is the one that we've seen a good, quite a bit of, Union College, those kind of things. Ithaca has won the last two outright Liberty League championships. We talked about that before. Um, but, you know, they had two playoffs teams last year in the Bombers and Union, and we know how hard it is to get an at-large bid into that uh, D3 football playoff. So big news for those two conferences. Excited to see what comes of that. And, again, it's just, it's just news, right? It's off-season news. It makes sense. Good. Better, better for the sport here.